It's Supper Time with Meat and Potatoes, a podcast by Embrace, where your journey is our journey. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalat, wassalamu ala rasulullah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my beloved brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another delicious episode of Embrace Meat and Potatoes podcast. Alhamdulillah, I'm joined by my beloved brothers in crime, Brother Rashid from Sacramento, California. Brother Rashid, how are you doing, my brother? Alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, doing pretty good, my brother. How are, how are you guys doing? Good to see you. Alhamdulillah, doing good. Now that I can see your beautiful faces, I'm doing much better. And we're also joined by our beloved brother Daniel from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Brother Daniel, how it do, my brother? How it do? Alhamdulillah, it's fantastic. How about yourself? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Doing, again, doing much better now that I'm here with my beloved brothers. Unfortunately, we are missing our beloved brother Abdul Rashid from Long Island, New York. We miss him very dearly, but inshallah, ta'ala, he'll, hopefully he'll be joining us for the next episode. So inshallah, ta'ala, we will be doing our best to um, have a really delicious episode for everyone despite his absence. And so for today's topic um, of discussion that we are going to present to the dinner table tonight is a discussion that, as with all of our discussions, we feel are is very important and very vital to those of us who converted to Islam and are learning about our new religion. And that is the idea of sectarianism. All these different sects, movements, and theological differences that you'll find within the Muslim community. And for many of us who convert to Islam, um, when we're told that Islam is a very straightforward religion, the, the fundamentals of it's very easy to understand, makes a lot of sense. We come into Islam with this expectation that we'll find a lot of unity within the Muslim community and within Islam, unlike many of us who may come from a Christian background where there's many different types of Christian sects, right? And then for many of us, when we jump into Islam and find just as many, if not even more, sects within uh, the Islamic community, it can, be, it can be a point of confusion for many of us. And how do we navigate um, ourselves through all these different types of groups? Which groups do, which group do I belong to based on all these different groups? You know, which group is right, which group is, is wrong? And it can become a very confusing, confusing journey for, for many new Muslims. So those of us here, um, at Meat and Potatoes, thought it, would, it was a really good idea to have a discussion on this idea, uh, on this topic of sectarianism within Islam and how we uh, were able to kind of navigate through all these different groups and kind of identify mainstream, orthodox, and authentic Islam. So inshallah ta'ala, that's going to be our um, topic of discussion for today. So I will first start off with my beloved uh, brother Rashid to share with us just some of his initial experiences when he converted to Islam, maybe some of, and how he kind of was able to perhaps navigate through all this, all these different types of sectarian groups and identify um, authentic Islam and Shalatana. So brother Rashid, um, the, the plate is in front of you, so please go ahead and Bring out what you got. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah. Um, and, and I know some others are going to touch on this as, as well. Um, so I won't go too, too, too deep into it. Um, but really, it, it came down to knowledge and understanding and in terms of what I knew was true and what was not true. Um, I'm very blessed and very fortunate um, that Allah put me on the path where when I first started to truly practice um, my religion, I was around a lot of good brothers who hung around the masjid a lot during or after Fajr, specifically on Sundays. Um, and we would just sit around and have breakfast and we would talk. And, and from that, um, a lot of knowledge came out of those discussions about Islam about the oneness of God um, and about the different sects and the different methabs and all the different things that were out there. And, and from that, it really came, always came back to the truth and about the oneness of Allah and about there being literally nothing, nothing else. So if we ever 
get caught. And that was really good because I knew that if I ever got caught in any situations that were going to be pulling me out of that or hearing, or maybe at a lecture or at a talk or visiting another mass shit, if I ever heard anything that was going to pull me away from that, then I kind of knew to just kind of, um, put a red flag out there within my own ears and do some homework and do some research and talk to the brothers who, um, th that I sat around with to get knowledge. And especially my imam at that particular time, just trying to get some, some knowledge from him. Um, and I remember even going, um, in, in one situation, um, I was given the task of, uh, being sort of a representative of our masjid for a group that was an umbrella organization of nine different masjids. Basically, I, I was our rep. And so I went on one event and we went to go pray at a particular place and people were putting a rock literally on the floor. And when we went into Sujud, people were putting their head on this rock and then they were coming back up. Well, of course, I didn't have a rock. I didn't know anything about that. So as soon as that was over, I ran to my imam. I'm like, what is this? What's, what's this thing about? Why are these people praying on, on this rock? So he broke it down and explained it to me. And at the end of the day, you know, and I won't get too deep into, you know, what that whole situation was about, but there was not anything wrong. There's no, you know, my prayer was still valid and whatnot, but really it came down to him explaining to me what that was about. And just so through knowledge, I knew and I understood that that was a Shia thing. Um, and it wasn't really something that we as Sunnis do. Um, and, and so just sort of move forward from that. And that was just a big, big, big lesson for me is that just because I see something doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It could just mean that it's just really, really different. And that's a case by case situation. Um, and so that, yeah, that's, that's basically my experience right there. Shola. Alhamdulillah, brother Rashid, that was a delicious appetizer that you bought to the table. Um, I really appreciated how you, a lot of a very important, uh, first point in lesson is identifying a strong, um, group, a strong group of brothers or sisters or community that can help, um, keep you on that straight path and help kind of identify for you. Um, what is the right path and which is the the wrong path? And I like how you mentioned um, um, understanding that you're going to be seeing things out there that may not necessarily be wrong but different. But I think that also goes the same way in terms of you'll be seeing things out there that will be wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to have people whom we can rely upon to help us navigate what is right and what is wrong, to di distinguish between what is authentic and what is, is inauthentic. But let's right. go ahead and go down to um, beloved brother Daniel and see what he has to, to offer for this topic for, for today, inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brother Kenneth. I apologize. I, I missed, the, uh, missed the salam to you. Um, Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. But, it's all right. I'll forgive but, you this time. This time. Uh, this time. I thought we I thought we had the uh, discussion <laughs> beforehand uh, in a previous uh, uh, previous episode where it's you know it's a it's a personal battle between uh, it's it's us you know we need to make the uh, it's 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 for the sake of Allah so I mm, think yeah. uh, I think we'll uh, you know uh, learn to uh, learn to forgive and, and move on inshallah but uh, maybe maybe I'll be a little more forward about it anywho. Um, my experiences uh, regarding, well, first, even coming across Islam, I have a lot of great stories and references regarding um, this sort of topic uh, of misinform uh, misinformation or different tracks of information uh, coming across my, uh, my path until eventually to the point where I'm at uh, now and what I would consider to be um, Orthodox uh, Islam. And... Um, I think, Brother Kenneth, when we had our one-on-one um, -on -one session in regards about my uh, uh, my convert story, I talked about this sort of topic. When coming to Islam, my first experience of coming to uh, Islam was picking up a Quran at a uh, at a Barnes and Nobles, and the only version that they had at that time, or at least maybe that they were selling at that time, uh, was uh, an Ahmadian uh, Quran, and now kind of coming across uh, this uh difference of now, now seeing it in the eyes of knowledge there were certain bits and pieces that 
even in the beginning, I had so many questions about and had to be uh, had to direct and had to ask questions to, to other brothers. And they're like, what is this even talking about? This has no reference to this or, or that um, um, as to what's a, as to what's a reference or making um, assumptions of points regarding uh, Isa alayhi salam, uh, that they're really emphasized on pointing out in their uh you know, perspective of, of, of religion. Um, but again, uh, the the issue, I, I guess, kind of stems from, especially as a new Muslim, um, and being I- initially introduced into the faith, there is a lot of, it seems to be a lot of conflicting information. And I think the path of knowledge uh, for new Muslims needs to be um readily open and accessible to them and made easy for them so that they don't come across this sort of plight and uh, come into the path of, um, you know, uh, indifference and knowledge or be misdirected because of, you know, who got there, who got there first. But with that, I'll send it back to you, Brother Kenneth, so we can open up the the roundabout discussion, inshallah. Oh, mashallah. Jazakallah khair, brother, Brother Daniel. And so... Now, I think both of you have um, had some really good good openers, um, and you also mentioned a, a few different um, groups. You know, we talked about uh, Shi'i Muslims, Shi'a Muslims. Um, Brother Daniel spoke about the Ahmadiyyas, and of course, there are other uh, groups out there. We don't really have time in this episode to to cover, and that's not really the focus. That that should not really be the focus for any. Uh, any any Muslim or any convert um, to learn all these different types of groups, but instead, um, there's really first one main point I want to before I kind of open up uh, with my kind of initial initial thoughts, and that is, while there are many different um, theological groups out there in in Islam, when it comes to mainstream Orthodox Islam. Generally speaking, the vast majority are mainstream Sunni Muslims. As a matter of fact, I think it's around maybe 70-80% identify in the mainstream. The remaining 20% are consist of all these other different types of groups. So alhamdulillah, I think for the most part, most of us would probably be exposed to mainstream Islam before we're exposed to these other groups. But of course, that's not always the case. And there are converts who may first come across Islam through some of these other types of groups. Um, And even if we are first exposed to mainstream Islam, it doesn't change the fact that it can be very confusing when you learn about all these other type of groups and and these these differences. And so for me, uh, when I first converted to Islam and started studying the religion, what I feel really helped me navigate through all these different isms and different, you know, groups and so to speak and identify what is the correct path and which path is leading is leading me towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty be the, the most high, um, is the fa- is focusing and having a strong fundamental understanding of the concept of Tawheed, the oneness of, of Allah. Um, there's actually a book uh, a book I, I read when I first became Muslim called The Fundamentals of Tawheed by uh, Bilal Phillips, um, and that book was a huge help for me because in that book, um, he kind of broke down Tawheed, what it means, and so I spoke about like, the three categories of Tawheed, Tawheed, uh, um, Tawheed al-Rububiyah, which is oneness and lordship, Tawheed al isma was sifat which is oneness and um, names and attributes, and then Tawheed al which is oneness in, in worship. And so in this book, he kind of described each particular category and what that means and how, you know, God, because we all know that Islam is submission to the will of God, right? And then as Muslims, we believe in only one God, la ilaha illallah. There is no deity of worship except for Allah, except for the one God. And so we know that that is in essence what Islam is. And so when you have a focus on understanding this concept of la ilaha illallah, which is tawheed, oneness of Allah, and you have that fundamental understanding of what it means for Allah to be one, what it means for him to be one in his 
in his rulership, what it means for him to be one in his divinity and his um, names and attributes in what it means to worship Allah alone. When you have a strong foundation in that, for me, it made it really easy to kind of differentiate, okay, which groups are, you know, on the safe path and which groups are kind of, you know, doing certain practices or saying certain things that really aren't um, aligning with this foundation of la ilaha illallah through understanding tawhid. And so for me, it was really holding on to understanding tawhid, oneness of Allah, that really helped me kind of navigate through all these different types of groups and kind of identify, okay, which groups are, you know, right and which groups are kind of like, kind of, you know, going a little way from that, from, from that road. So that was what was, was really helpful for, for me. Um, but I think from here, uh, now that we've had our initial openers, we can go ahead and, and open the floor, maybe talk about um, other groups we've had experiences with, or, you know, maybe types of um, different uh, experiences that we've, we've had that may have um, challenged our fundamental beliefs and made us have to kind of go back to the source. Yeah, Bismillah. I think in, in, in that in that space, you know, I'll share one experience that I that I had, and and let me say, and I know this is debatable, but I, I have love for the Sufis, you know, because Sufism is really about um, internal. It's about the heart. It's about studying the diseases of the heart and then the internal ills that can plague us as human beings and how to get over them. So that, in a broad sense, that's kind of what um, it, it's about. But in, in one space, I was around a group of people who, and we had got into some Sufism things. Um, and we followed, followed one tariqa. And, and again, I'm not here to knock any tariqa or to say it's good or bad. I'm just sharing what my experience. Um, we you know, followed this particular tariqa and everything was beautiful. You know, we were taught some weirds and some thickers and alhamdulillah, you know, it really, I felt got me a lot closer to God. My connection was so so strong and and to this day i still love some of the vicars and the weirds that are involved with it but as i dug deeper into that particular deal what it came down to was worshiping the person who developed that tariqa that mm -hmm. sheikh I mean, and that's really what it kind of came down to and some certain things were said that made me kind of go whoa 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 wait a minute now now we're getting into a space of worshiping that person or elevating that person as opposed to elevating a law or talking about um, strongly about the Prophet Solomon. So once we hit that bridge, that's when I had to retreat and back up a little bit. Um, but the mm. only reason why I was able to do that, I feel, well, but it's all by a law. You know, a law just puts some red flags in my own heart. But it was through the conversations and discussions I was having with other people and about the Tawheed that was, was touched on earlier by Kenneth, just knowing that at the end of the day, it's all about that. So once we started to, in my opinion, look at and worship that sheikh, that's when I had to just, whoa, pump the brakes. You know, let me let me not get that far into it, but I still maintain the weird. You know, I still do my dhikr. I mean, we're doing the law's names. We're acting, asking for forgiveness, you know, and all of these other beautiful things. And that's still a part of my, my ibadah and what I want to step up during the month of Ramadan. But once you get caught up into something where you're starting to worship another human being, you know, that, that's when just my advice is just to be very, very, very careful about that. And on that uh, topic regarding the uh, um, uh, Sufis and Sufism, so I'm about the same um, realm as you, Brother Rashid, um, that there are some beautiful practices, there's some beautiful reflections, and even the fact of wanting to being living a more aesthetic life so that mm. things are simplistic and your focus is on, you know, the worship of Allah SWT, and mm. the reminder is constantly, constantly, constantly there, you know, is a beautiful, wonderful thing. But again, once right. that line kind of gets crossed, that's when things get a little um a little tricky um mm -hmm. or even can fall under the lines of of shirk because you're worshiping the the person as opposed to uh, a law at that point right um right. and uh i even had a, a a moment where i was interested in a in marrying a sister from my uh um uh well the community i originally came from when mm -hmm. uh before i moved to lancaster here um when her brother uh came to kind of um 
talk to me and like, hey, are you a suitable, you know, candidate as a husband for my sister? You know, he was asking about these, like, you know, like, uh, oh, are you, are you a Sufi? Are you a, um, a this kind of Sufi, this kind of Sufi? And I'm like, bro, I have no idea what you're even talking about. Like, just throwing <laughs> out uh, terms and titles and, and things. And I'm, I had no reference whatsoever inside of, um, you know, my understanding of Orthodox Islam. And, you know, from that, he was like, I don't think it's a good idea. And I'm like, yeah, you know, no. maybe Say not. what? <laughs> Say what? What's all these groups? <laughs> And, you know, fantastic sister, you know, I'm never, uh, I wouldn't, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what her, um, what her, or her brother's uh, basis regarding, um, cause I didn't get too far into it. You know, it kind of stopped from, uh, from that point. Like once things get a little, uh, um, if, if we can't have a basis of foundation regarding, um, our religion, you know, it's, uh, it can be very, um, it may be best to move on, uh, hmm. from, Mm-hmm. that situation which is what i'd uh what i had done in that situation mm-hmm. um i i have another reference too regarding um so then you brought up about the nation of islam brother rashid right mm-hmm. um that even just yesterday i had a conversation about this when i was uh uh oh, preaching if you will about islam uh in a uh, in an online group setting to non-muslims and people of different sorts of uh, of faith and a person stood up you know uh, uh, electronically if you will uh to say oh these people are you know uh, fakers and liars because they believe that they were aliens who came and eventually uh you know got taken over by the like the, the, like slaves that they used to make like i don't i don't know if you're um, we really no. looked into the, the story behind the, the nation yeah. of a uh, nation of Islam, but like the historical background regarding it, it talks about you know the uh, an ancient people who, who came and that, that whole basis of the story. And I'm like, this has nothing to do regarding <laughs> Islam or the Islam that I'm preaching. Um, and it's interesting that sometimes the basis, again, uh, maybe apparent in the civil rights movement. Uh, you know, for the nation of Islam uh, being the introduction to eventual Orthodox Islam is generally what happened to a lot of, you know, African Americans during that time. They came across this and then uh, by looking into it, they eventually came to Orthodox Islam uh, from that. And maybe the same exact case would have been for this person. You know, they, the only introduction they had of any reference of the word Islam is this concept, which is completely and utterly foreign, uh, you know, in a, in our sort of uh, belief, you know, we don't we don't believe in this um, this right. story, right. Mm-hmm. right? And I'm actually um, I'm glad you mentioned uh, you mentioned the nation, brother Daniel, because I think that is also a kind of a important point to talk about when we're talking about like all these different different groups. Um, and we know, you know, when you first hear the nation of Islam, you know, most people, most people will think. Well, of course, they're Muslim. Then they have the Islam in the title, Nation of Islam. You know, so how could you how could you say that's not a, a you know a, a authentic Muslim Muslim group? And so that's when we kind of go back into the red lines that you just talked about, knowing where to draw the red lines. Like, what line is it that you just cannot cross um, that takes you outside the folds of Islam? And it kind of goes back into again having a strong foundation of the fundamentals of Islam, right? Or strong aqidah, you know, creed, so to speak. And so, you know, on, in the case of the the nation, there, of course, are some really, I think, beneficial things that came out of from that group. You know, that group advocated for African-American empowerment back during the civil rights era. You know, African-American self-sufficiency. And, you know, really, um, you know, Malcolm X was originally a part of the, the, the nation, you know, one of our most influential uh, civil rights advocates in American American history. And so there was definitely, I think, a lot of khair and benefit that came out of that group. And for many Americans, that was their first exposure to certain Islamic phrases, you know, you know, Muslims, Islam, Allah. Um, but when you go into, again, we got to look into the fundamentals and what the fundamentals of belief of, the, of that group is that you, Elijah Muhammad is their is their prophet? Okay, whoa, hold up, something ain't right. If you guys ever saw that video of that one guy, hold on, wait a minute, something ain't right. <laughs> we, because we know la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no deity worthy worship except for Allah, 
And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And we know that he is the final messenger of Allah. So there can't be a messenger that comes after him. And so, again, just kind of when you have um, a strong foundation of Orthodox Islam, of mainstream Islam, you know, it can help you, you know, know where those lines are with some of these other types of groups. Brother Rashid, Brother Dan, you guys mentioned, you know, Sufi, uh, Sufi Muslims. There are definitely a lot of, I think, benefits that benefit that does come from different um pockets of Sufis within within that group. You know, they do advocate for the importance of, you know, um, self, um, Im- self-improvement in terms of, you know, spiritual self-improvement and the importance of, you know, focusing on f- um, developing the heart. And there's a lot of khair in it. But of course, there are, as you guys, as you brothers mentioned, certain certain pockets where they kind of go to the point where they're practically worshiping their, their imams, their scholars. Um, and that kind of goes into, I think, also... We need to understand what worship is, right? And because when you talk to some of these groups, they'll say, oh, no, I'm not worshiping uh, these these imams. I just believe that through praying to them, I'm praying to God. Right. And it's like, well, that's exactly what you know, some Christian groups will say. Right. Uh, it's like, again, it's, it's like it's really important to understand for us to also know what worship is, and that kind of goes back into understanding Tawheed al-Uluhiya, oneness in worship, and what that means. Because, you know, putting our hands up and making supplication or asking, that is a form of worship. Allah identifies in the Qur'an that that is worship. And so when you're doing that at a grave or to another person, you are essentially worshiping them, right? And so it's, again, I think it's really important for us to kind of develop and have a really strong foundation of Tawheed and what that means and understanding the six pillars of faith um, in, in Islam and, under, and developing that strong aqidah, that strong creed can really help you know, you know, which groups you can, you can, you can fly with and which groups you kind of have to have a, maintain a healthy, healthy distance with, so to speak. Yeah. And, and even sometimes, uh, even when not even some sects, if you will, are not worshiping an individual, you know, that definitely does happen. I'm definitely not going to take that away. But I've heard even the thought that this individual developed this weird or this activity that you should do because they are going to, they're so close to the prophet that they're going to paradise. You know what I mean? And it's like, mm-hmm. no one, no one is promised paradise except for the 10. We, we know about them. Um, but yeah. to put anyone else on that list and say, well, I'm going to do what he did because he was promised paradise. You know, that's just another level where um, where we where we actually need to be to be careful. And, and the nation, just to touch on that, you know, my dad was with the Nation of Islam. And when I was a child, you know, I grew up and saw a lot of that. A lot of that stuff. And yeah, there were there were some some shady, some shaky theologies in that, you know, about Elijah Muhammad, about Afar Muhammad. But I, I will have to say, yeah, like, you know, a lot of the practices uh, and the brotherhood and, and those uh, and things of that nature were very positive. And they're trying to turn around. They're trying to make that turn now. If you look at some of their recent um, theologies and whatnot, they're, they're trying. So I don't want to completely throw them under the bus when we talk about the, the nation. So I have to throw a plug out, if you will, for, for them. But at the same time, you know, we, we, we do want to be careful and we want to talk about the oneness of God. And, and at the end of the day, that's it. If you're, if you're taught to worship someone or, or follow their practices because of X, Y, and Z reason, pump the brakes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, to throw, throw a bone in this, uh, uh, in my own experiences before coming to Islam, these same examples show up periodically in every sort of major religion, if you will. Mm-hmm. So we're yeah. using the, the example of having people that are so close or so pious that they either gain power or authority or are saying that they have a placement or a place you know, in an afterlife that mm. you know, person we're all not going to see until the point of where we get there. Um so it's it's to say as if we're established in a place that we're not, uh, you know, promised or established in. It's kind of the same case how in, uh, you know, Catholicism there is the the sainthoods or the inside of Buddhism they kind of have the same sort of concept where they believe like certain 
uh, bodhisattvas or people who reach that pinnacle of being a Buddha uh, hmm. gain the ability. Like there, there's one in particular that's like, oh, he's going to be the the, uh, the saint or the patron of taking children out of purgatory. And I'm like, purgatory and in buddhism <laughs> like um <laughs> and so like who, who goes to say what happens exactly when when you die as to you know are you going to have a place amongst where you would like to be um uh you know accordingly i mean i, I think we all would like to um imagine and hope that we're going to get to uh to jenna but that's going to be to the mercy of allah swan ta'ala hmm. um and again, as as kind of mentioned, you know, the only ten that were promised uh, paradise were the ten that were promised paradise. And for us, um, you know, we hope that we're given that easy account. But the reality is that um, if we're putting um, our faith into things that have no uh, reference or that, because people can tell you anything, and hopefully, uh, you know, we have the wisdom and the the alcohol, uh to make that a uh, uh, distinction to think for. Um, think for ourselves and come across the the correct uh, understanding so that we don't fall prey or even victim uh, to people trying to take advantage of you in this life. So, right. Um, right. That's a good Absolutely. point. Good point. Good point. So, alhamdulillah, I think we made some really, um, really strong points um, in our our, our dinner date over here. And now it's time for our oh, beloved uh, dessert round. Dessert round. So, inshallah, we'll go over <laughs> the table. People will bring out their the dessert as always. And we'll start with um, the bean pie, daddy. Brother, yeah, brother bean Rashid. pie, daddy. Yeah, bring, out, to, bring out the bean pie, brother. I'm going to bring out some bean pie and some vanilla ice cream. I think I brought some before, but I'm, I'm really feeling ice never cream goes right bad. Now. Never, never, goes never goes bad. bad. Never goes bad. Never gets ice cream. Never goes bad. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, 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 on the final round here, I'm going to read something that's really, really, really short. Um, and I think that punches the, home, punches the point home for me. Um, but it, the reading is um, from uh, Ibn Kathir. Um, so it's a tafsir um, from the Quran by, by Ibn Kathir. But um, it says, we were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu may peace and blessings be, be upon him, when he drew a line in front of him and said, this is a lost path. He also drew two lines to his right and two lines to his left and said, these are the paths of shaitan. He then placed his hand in the middle path and recited this ayat. And verily, this, this is my straight path, so follow it. And follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. This is his ordain, this, this he has ordained for you that you may have taqwa, so that you may fear Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu just remind us to stay on that middle path, stay on the right path, and, and do not deviate. And I would say that's my, my my final final piece of dessert. Alhamdulillah, that was a delicious, delicious piece of bean pie with some nice, nice creamy um, vanilla bean, vanilla, vanilla bean. Ice cream bean. The Ooh, there you go, vanilla mm. bean. Yeah, vanilla bean, you know, make it yeah. <laughs> extra crisp, Michelle. And that was an excellent point. Jazakallah khair, Brother Rishi. Oh, May Allah reward you with good. Shalom. All right. Brother Daniel, what do you have for the dessert table for tonight? You know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, wifey made some tiramisu that's up uh, upstairs right now that I'm, I'm uh, looking to probably grab a grab a plate of that uh, after we're done here. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'll share it with you gentlemen too beforehand. Shalom. I'm not you know, you want for your know. for your brother what you want for yourself, right? That's yeah. right. That's right, man. <laughs> Bring out that tiramisu. Yeah, Fed exit. Fed exit. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah. Um, I guess is any any sort of um, uh, sort of advice in regards for this topic is that especially coming to Islam for us as reverts uh, into into Islam, there is a great chance that we're going to come across some. Uh, you know, misinformation or uh, poor interpretations, or again, people trying to take advantage of um, a lack thereof uh, of knowledge. Um, and this is one of the main emphasis. Uh, the emphasis really is to study, to study, to study, to look into things, to to question things. And this is, you know, not, uh, you know, against our religion whatsoever. You know, our religion. 
uh, focuses on that sort of aspect. If you don't know, ask somebody who does know, or if you don't know, find out for yourself to, to look into things, to study, to reflect, to ponder. Um, you know, if, uh, and, and this is one of the beauties in regards for, for Islam, if something isn't making sense or something just doesn't really kind of fit your, uh, fit your flow or, you know, that something is causing some sort of doubts, uh, we are encouraged then to, um, you know, try to find and like what's stemming that or ask the person who is more wise uh, as to the, you know, answering that uh, for us. So, um, but in, in that sort of same case, if we do happen to come across a practice or an understanding or um, even something that may be grave or detrimental instead of our faith, Allah SWT is, is most forgiving and he is the one who guides us. All knowledge comes from, uh, derives from him, from our, uh, and a lot of that stems from our uh, sincerity. If we are sincere, Allah SWT is going to guide us. So may Allah SWT uh, forgive us for the mistakes that we make and keep us on the straight path and accept us among the, the pious on the day of judgment. I mean, I mean. I mean. Alhamdulillah, that was a delicious piece of tiramisu, Brother Daniel. Zakhlaq. Inshallah. All right. So for. For, for my dessert round, I guess I'll bring out some, uh, let's say I did, I did lemon bars last time, so I'm going to have to do something a little different. How about some nice, delicious, rich chocolate mousse? You know, three layers, mm. three layer mm. chocolate mousse with some whipped cream on top. Mm. You know, get, mm. me, get, get me hungry. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I know I, I've reiterated this point throughout today's discussion, but again, I just cannot emphasize enough that the best way to um, not fall onto these the paths of shaitan that Brother Rashid referenced in, in the hadith he uh, uh, recited out for us um, is to focus on developing a strong foundation, a strong creed, if you will. You know, Islam all Islam always comes back down to that phrase that statement that each and every single one of us um had to say during our journey which is la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there's no deity there's no god worthy of worship except for allah and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his prophet you know understanding what that phrase means what that phrase encompasses really making sure through reading proper sources derived from the Quran and Sunnah, um, understanding, you know, speaking to people of knowledge whom we, whom we trust, like Brother Rashid, uh, Rashid mentioned, and really making sure that our foundation is, is strong. Whatever groups you run into um, throughout your, your journey, you'll be able to point, see the red flags that are there. You'll be able to see the red lines in the sand as you get closer and closer to these groups. And you can know where you can say, all right, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not willing to go past, past this line here. That I really think is what saved me. And I think when inshallah ta'ala, um, if Allah um, Almighty um, wills can save, uh, save every, save everybody. And, the last point I want to make is I think it's also very important not to fall into um, what, I what I will call um, uh, war sectarianism. So what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. yes, there are many groups out there that are um, off the straight path, that are incorrect. But it's also important to know when is the time and when is the place to have a debate or have discussions. Because you'll find also people like you know, getting into serious like arguments, maybe even perhaps violent arguments with other other groups to try and refute them and things of that nature. And sometimes depending on how you're doing it and when you're doing it, that could, that could cause more harm than good. And so it's also important to utilize emotional intelligence and just, you know, common sense as to when you should engage with these other groups in discussion. Is the discussion going to be fruitful? Is it going to or is it just going to cause unnecessary, you know, division? So it's also just really important to know when to have those those discussions as well. So 
that is my deserve for tonight. And I think with that, we have reached the end of this delicious episode. I want to again thank my beloved brothers, Brother Rashid and Brother Daniel, for joining me um, for this delicious meal. And I want to also again thank all of you who are watching and or listening. Um, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah Almighty wills. Uh, we pray that you have um, benefited from this uh, from this episode and have learned something from it. If it's something that you think of as a benefit, please do um, share it with those who you think can really benefit from the discussion, inshallah ta'ala. And so with that, we'll go ahead and end uh, this episode. Allahumma subhanak wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiraka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakum la khairan everyone. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah ta'ala, we will see you all at the next dinner date. Meat and Potatoes is a podcast by Embrace. Embrace is a comprehensive convert care and empowerment organization dedicated to providing Muslim converts with social and educational spaces that encourage growth, shape their Islamic identity, and equip them with the tools they need for their lifetime journey. To learn more, visit us at www.embracereverts.org.